this is the first byte of the new engineering building, the demolition part. Uh, I brought that for Steve and, Stan and uh, Stanley, who I worked with. My topic is wind turbines that morph, and I will show you what that means uh, in a minute. Uh, Stanley's email says you have to show the audience why your topic is important. So why is my topic important? Renewable energy drives climate change, is driven by climate change. And uh, wind turbines are arguably the cleanest of the renewable energy. And if you take the global uh, implementation of wind turbine, uh, over the last 15 or so years, it has doubled every three years. This is tremendous amount of growth just within the last 10 years. It is also the most affordable of the renewable energy forms. Uh, compared to solar, it is about half based on a per kilowatt basis. So it's a very important topic. And what is the problem? There are two problems with wind. N not necessarily the fact that we we're talking earlier they kill birds or they tend to be noisy. Some people just don't like the looks. But from an engineering point of view, there are two major problems. One is efficiency, two, capacity, and they are tied. If you take uh, every thermal system, whether it is your car, refrigerator, your ship, and your airplane, they are all designed for a point. What does that mean? I'll take the first example because you all have cars probably and you know what I mean. A car is designed to operate at one speed. It could be 60 miles per hour. It could be 70 miles an hour. It could be a little more if it's a sport car. That's the design point. And that we call it the rated point. Uh, in the case of wind turbines, in, in this case, the turbine is designed for 11 meters per second wind. When you run your car at 50 miles, 40 miles, 20 miles, you are running it at off design. It's not, it's not designed for that. So the efficiency will drop. In the case of wind, we have to, because we have to pick one speed, the efficiency at that speed is the maximum, which is about 50%. That's what you get at best. Now, if you go over the design point, which is eight meters per second, you will maintain that high efficiency but after a short distance of about at 14 meters per second, you have to stop for safety reasons. It's dangerous to operate it after that. On the left side, when you drop, when your wind speed drops, it has to drop because the wind doesn't make appointment with us. It will come at all speed ranges. So when the speed range drops, look at your efficiency. It will drop from 50% to zero at about two meters per second. So it's a very serious problem. Number one, the capacity factor is low. It will operate somewhere between 20 and 45 percent. In fact, in Germany in 2012, the operating range, the capacity was 17.5 percent. In the, in the United States, it's 32 percent. That's not a technology thing. It's just a political decision. Do you want the higher energetic regime or the most frequent regime? So the gray area, the yellow area, is where the wind comes somewhere between 40, 20 and 40% of your design speed. And in that range, the f efficiency dropped from the top 50% to about 10%, 15%, and 25%. That's a big problem. That's a big problem. Why is that? I have already explained that. And I have already explained that also sometimes in the past. This doesn't happen in nature. In other words, we don't design, nature doesn't design its creatures, human beings, birds, fish. It doesn't design for a point. Just imagine we are designed to walk or run at one speed in that when we start walking slowly, our efficiency will drop. We will not be able to walk to cafeterias. 
live alone run. Nature efficiency is practically flat throughout the entire load range. Now, I spent quite a bit of time on this, given 10 minutes, but I think it's very important that you understand the part load issue. Nature doesn't design for a part load, and everything in engineering is designed for a part load, and efficiency at part load is bad. And biomimicry has answered a lot of questions improving this part load concept. In fact, uh, Airbus's uh, manager was saying uh, the next generation of airplanes will mimic the bone structures of the most efficient birds. And a typical example he took was an eagle. And he also said, you forestry, internally it will be equipped with forestry like a lotus leaf. So it will resist all dirts and toxics, etc. So biomimicry is emerging. And you recall riblets that uh, revolutionized a few years ago uh, is, uh, Olympic swimming. Uh, these clothes that came, they mimicked simply shark skin. And they were a lot faster than the rest. So if you talk not only birds, fish, fish have about 0 0.74 for rainbow trout. Four skillers have up to 91% efficiency. And uh, the propeller, human built propeller at base has about 0 0.7 at a design point, which is fairly good, right behind rainbow trout. But that efficiency significantly drops when the speed drops. The point is not the design point comparison. The fish have nearly constant efficiency at BART load. So nature doesn't design for a point. Nature is very efficient, which brings a question to mind. Why are fish so efficient? The question is, number one, they use directional compatibility. I don't want to spend too much time. Simply put, they create vortex, which is a waste behind them. That wasted energy, that vort, they use it. It's kind of recycling their wasted energy to propel them forward. That's one reason. We cannot do that unless we are moving. Wind turbines don't move, they are stationary. The second reason is adaptive geometry. Tubercles, these have been researched somewhere in uh, quite a few universities to adapt uh, the, uh, the whale structure in the, in the front of the turbine, in the leading side. Riplets, which I mentioned for a swim, th there are also a lot of research going on. This is the area of our research, variable geometry. So, how does it work? I want to go very quickly. Suppose this is my blood, and this is the flow separation, meaning it is laminar, very good. Now the blade goes deforms, there is part load for separation. So I will bend my geometry towards the separated dot. What does that do? That, that simply cancels the separation. And that is the idea. We applied this to horizontal axis wind turbine, vertical axis, and we are still working on the Savonius. And we got some interesting results. I don't want to go to the details of these results. And all these are numerical results. And we tested our system in a wind tunnel, which we designed at San Diego State using a sewer pipe. And these are the results. The rigid traditional blade is the blue. The red is the flexible blade that we designed. Not only it has better efficiency, but it has also wider range of operation. Simply put, flexible turbines are good, and morphing is good. I'm done. <laughs> yes. So, one of the differences between living organisms and inanimate engineered objects is that living organisms are alive. And so, when you make these flexible blades to mimic life, the question is do they last as long? Right? In terms Are they as robust in terms of, of being able to put out in nature and, and survive for a long period of time? Wind turbines last. We are not suggesting a huge deviation from the material order of the existing wind turbine blades. We just want them to be a little morphing. By the way, we are not talking about significant bending. The optimum bend within the speed range we are looking for is somewhere between 10 and 12 
15 degrees. So just a small bending, a small morph, will do double digit efficiency improvement at part load. I'm not comparing the design load. At part load, when the wind speed dies, your efficiency will be improving by double digits. That's what we observed. So, um, you know, not only does, um, you know, a wind speed vary over the course of a day, but there's also a seasonal component. Why can you design uh, wind turbines where you could actually physically go in and alter them depending on the expected wind speed over a season, like at a winter? That's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, the regional alteration requires removing that blade and putting another one, which is a huge investment. Meaning you have, in fact, uh, I, read, I read a proposal recently where they propose the blade will be longer and shorter depending on the uh, amount of wind that is coming. But you are active, you have to actively control that. Mm -hmm. Meaning there must be a motor that will suck the tip by a given length during that appropriate period and then it will extend it when the speed changes. So th that control mechanism it can be complicated and expensive. What we propose here is natural, let the blade morph depending on the wind speed and then the energy that is exerted on, on the blade. We don't want active control because of the, those disadvantages. Hi, uh, interesting talk. Uh, similar to the previous points, have, did you take costs into account in, your, in the studies you have done so far? Yes, that's a good point, Joe. Uh, cost, again, we will use very similar materials, comparable in terms of cost to the existing materials. They are all in the, in the uh, uh, same range. Uh, so it won't be a whole lot more expensive once everything is developed. This is still, we have tested it in the lab, we have tested it numerically, some 3D simulation, some 2D simulation. We have applied to horizontal axis wind turbines, applied to some vertical axis wind turbines. We saw nothing but beautiful thing. I mean, uh, the, the conclusion should also say, you can't really go wrong from learning the billions of years of optimization of nature. Why are we building, by the way, anybody knows uh, spoilers on, uh, on a sport car? It's the same thing, same thing. It has already been proven in some technologies. And uh, also the US Air Force gave some billions of dollar research some years ago on aircraft wings that morph. The conclusion was it is superior but too complicated to implement. I agree, this may be dangerous, complicated on the air, but at least this is a stationary standing thing. Why are we building rigid blades? And the load is not one rigid parameter. It comes as a variable load. And, uh, uh, but yeah, cost will be com comparable to the existing blades. Other questions? I'll ask one last, oh, here. You can ask one last oh. question. Well, I didn't want to take yours. I'll, I'll make it short. Does the morphing affect the acoustical signature of the blades? In the uh, field, maybe. You uh, mentioned about noise, and I don't know if in your wind tunnel test you tried to measure that or... We never measured hear. noise because the noise from the motor, from <laughs> the... <laughs> this is a wind tunnel. Everything. It will dwarf everything else. This so is, it's, uh, <laughs> the fan is very noisy. In the field, maybe. In the field, I don't know. Oh. But this noise and, and uh, aesthetics, I mean, do we want renewable energy, which is the cleanest, or <laughs> we want uh, fossil fuel? I, I hear complaints about everything. We have to take some damage, uh, some penalty if we are going to have the luxury that we have today. I mean, you can't have it your cake and eat it too. So. Noise is not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so Asfaf, if you take this ability to use a wider variety of wind speeds, 
the total amount of energy generation by, let's just say, the existing number of windmills out there, um, how much will it increase? Oh, tremendous. So big that I'm scared of mentioning. Uh, definitely double digit. Remember, we are not only increasing the efficiency at part load, we are also increasing the range. Meaning now, remember the wind dies to about three meters per second, the turbines will stop. This one kept going until less than two meters per second. And then when the wind stopped, it stopped, of course. When we restarted, it started way before the rigid blade started. So at about one and a half in the, in the wind tunnel, the, wind sta the turbine sta kicked in. The rigid blade was still waiting for more, more velocity, more, more speed, more wind speed. So uh, at be because of the capacity, which I mentioned, really low for wind turbines, that will go up and the efficiency will go up, I think it will revolutionize. And that is, by the way, this is the concept that is being considered now. Michelle, I want you to ask me a question later on if you have, because I want you to understand this. <laughs> this is a secret, by the way. You guys don't have to. Thanks very much, Asfa. Good way to end the revolution based on evolution. <laughs>